With a camera I will zoom in into left-sided middle cranial fossa. Okay, I think it's fine. Zoom and levels. we will confirm that this opening is foramen ovale. Opening which is further posterior to foramen ovale is located at the spine of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. That's why it's called the foramen spinosum. Through foramen spinosum, a branch of the maxillary artery, which is called the middle meningeal artery, enters the skull and its main trunk is leaving here quite a deep impression as it is the mid-size blood vessel. It's the arterial blood vessel which also means it ha carries blood with relatively high pressure. So it will have a bit of imprint on the internal table of the bone. Unfortunately, this blood vessel becomes frequently injured when a person receives the blow to the side of the head to a temple where even minimal fractures of the temporal bone in its squama could result in a damage done to middle meningeal artery and as a result of that severe and sometimes lethal bleeding could happen which is called the extradural or epidural hemorrhage. I'm pretty sure as we're talking about all these different openings that you're just waiting for this opening to finally appear and to have a couple of words to say about it. So what we see on the skull is what is described in anatomy of the skull as the foramen lacerum. So it's lacerated foramen. In a living person it is going to look much different compared to what we see on the skeleton. This part here currently covered with the back of my forceps will be covered with a nice cartilage so it will practically cl be closed and the only thing that we're going to have chance to see will become this opening here through which the main trunk of the internal carotid artery will finally enter the skull. Let's turn the skull from inferior direction to see the floor of the skull but from different view and let's find out exactly through which opening internal carotid artery first enters the skull and then runs through its own internal carotid canal. Perhaps we can use first a couple of important landmarks just to make sure that we have a good orientation so this is inferior view to the skull. Of course this is foramen magnum, this is the basilar part of the occipital bone, condyles of the occipital bone and this or this on the other side are tips of the petrous part of the temporal bone. So opening that could be seen directly against my probe, I'm just placing it directly into it, that is foramen lacerum. Also one can see here additional openings that we previously discussed. Here is a spinosum foramen, here is foramen ovale, so for middle meningeal artery and for the mandibular branch of the trigeminal. So on the underside of the petrous part of the temporal bone we're going to have this opening here or this opening on the opposite side. Let's zoom in, let's see it a little bit better and a little bit closer. That is the beginning of the internal carotid canal. So opening which is here or on the opposite side is here. So what I'm going to do now, again with the help of these yellow and blue pipe cleaners, I will insert them into carotid canals on either side. So I will start on this side here and force the pipe cleaner to run the entire length of the carotid canal until it finally appears on the opposite side of the skull. I will do the same with a yellow colored pipe cleaner pushing it into left-sided carotid canal and then we will turn the skull and see well, it from so the above. So to say our work is done. The blue pipe cleaner represents the right-sided internal carotid artery, the yellow one of course the left-sided internal carotid artery. So we have allowed them to go through what is called the foramen lacerum on the skull and here they are sitting next to pituitary fossa or cella tersica so as the internal carotid artery will 
at this region practically become part of the circle of Willis which surrounds the stalk of pituitary gland this is something that will be addressed in the part about anatomy of the central nervous system but we can understand that its three principal branches will be directed towards frontal lobe of the brain they will be of course anterior cerebral arteries they will continue in a little gap the longitudinal fissure which is in between left and right cerebral hemispheres so they will just gently wind around corpus callosum second branch which is much larger will be directed more peripherally and will pop onto the lateral aspect of the cerebral hemisphere passing through the lateral cerebral fissure or a fissure of sylvius so for the middle cerebral artery we say that it practically supplies almost the entire lateral aspect of the cerebral hemisphere the third smallest branch will be directed more posteriorly its name is posterior communicating artery and it is going to be one of these structures or vessels that finally assemble this circular run of blood around pituitary stalk that is called the circle of Willis so I hope that this nicely described the carotid canal including frame and last room so we can move on to see some additional openings on the base of the skull again somewhat posterior superior and lateral view to the base of the skull in order for us to see the opening which is found on the posterior aspect of the pyramid of the temporal bone the opening is this one here that opening is called the internal acoustic meatus and it will allow two different cranial nerves to penetrate deeper into temporal bone these nerves are cranial nerve number seven the facial nerve and cranial nerve number eight vestibulocochlear nerve or what is previously known as the statoacoustic nerve so of course cranial nerve number eight which supplies inner ear with its terminal fibers will have no need to escape or emerge from inside the temporal bone but the facial nerve will have to figure out its way through the bone and to perhaps again reappear on the base of the skull at one of the most bizarre locations so let's turn the skull again by 180 degrees and let's see it from the inferior direction to find out the opening that allows facial nerve to practically comes out of the cranial so cavity. here we are again seeing the skull from inferior direction and probably just the biggest and most massive landmark which needs to be pointed out is the mastoid process of course this opening here that is external acoustic canal it is the left side of the skull so it would be beautiful if I would have a chance to show it to you guys but unfortunately it has been broken because one long projection comes from the temporal bone here and it is known as the styloid process of the temporal bone so for that reason opening which is located between the base of the styloid process and the mastoid process of the temporal bone is this little opening here that is called the stylomastoid foramen I'll again try to put the blue colored pipe cleaner into it in order to identify it that's this opening here so when I slowly remove it I'm sure you would be able to see where exact location of the stylum master foramen is I'll now zoom it out so perhaps the position of this opening is now a little bit more clear so that's the exit point for facial nerve cranial nerve number seven the major motor nerve of this the time face. we go back to the posterior cranial fossa again I will rotate the skull and from a posterior superior view we're gonna have a chance to see this huge opening which is obviously not made by a single bone but rather is irregularly shaped opening between occipital bone and the petrous part of the temporal bone so this opening that we have here is of course the jugular foramen in a section about the occipital bone I tried to identify it earlier introducing dural sinuses including this massive groove 
which is in the form of a letter S, hence the name the sigmoid sinus. And the sigmoid sinus allows the venous blood to finally reach the exit point from the skull. So we tend to say that sigmoid sinus essentially becomes internal jugular vein. That opening is quite large, obviously way too large for just formation of a single vein. So in addition to it, three different cranial nerves will pass out of the skull at the very same location. These are cranial nerves number 9, 10, and 11. And of course we know that their names are glossopharyngeal nerve, that's number 9, vagus number 10, and accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve number 11. And finally we need to find opening for cranial nerve number 12, the hypoglossal nerve. In order to point out and to identify it more directly, I have already placed the blue colored pipe cleaner through this opening, or better to say this is hypoglossal canal, whereas on the left hand side you can see it where the tip of my forceps is, but it is vacant as I wanted you to see its exact location. So practically we know it is on the lateral part of the occipital bone above the condyles and with the blue pipe cleaner still in place I'll slowly rotate the skull and give you a chance to see exactly where is the exit point for cranial nerve 12 from the skull. Of course with the pipe cleaner in place it's going to be very difficult for anyone to see where opening exactly is located. So the next step I'm going to do is to remove it relatively slowly so you can see this and by turning the skull a little bit like this this is ideal position where you can see actually this is quite deep and long canal of the hypoglossal nerve. I'm reinserting the pipe cleaner into it and I'll be removing it one more time for us to observe this bony landmark.